My name is Malagy and I'm going to speak about the place names of Ireland in general. I'll mention Tyrone in particular where I can. Place names are a facet of the cultural heritage of Ireland. What we have inherited has come down to us from, for the most part, through the medium of the Irish language. But other cultures have contributed to the potage of names that fascinate and intrigue many of us today. Viking, Norman, Scots and English settlement added their own ingredients to the place named soup. Isolating and interpreting the various parts of the tasty mix can be a rewarding and enriching experience. For anyone wishing to develop an interest in place names, I would point out that there are quite a number of books that relate to place names in Ireland. So those should spark your interest and lead you on perhaps to a deeper study. A good knowledge of Irish is of course a big help to those trying to establish the meaning of Irish place names. But that said, however, you can still get started by arming yourself with a good Irish-English dictionary or by simply searching the large research databases called loganium.ie and the place names of Northern Ireland Org. There's a major work of the past by a Jesuit priest called Hogan and he titled it grandly the Onomasticon Godalicum. It is useful but you need to get used to his use of abbreviations for it to be meaningful to you. Many of the studies of place names follow the historical administrative division of Ireland going from province, the largest, down through county, barony, civil parish and townland for the smallest. You go even smaller as it were than that, I think I should mention field names. Field names are literally the names of fields as on a, an ordinary farm. They also include under the term field names individual items of place names that occur in any community. For instance outside Six Mile Cross there's a, a place called The Round Now and I've discovered in my studies that now is a corruption of the word knoll, K-N-O-L-L, the little hillock. So there are umpteen things like that, apart from the names of fields that are on farms and are known only to the farmers and their neighbours, perhaps. And these are in danger of being lost forever if families change, go away from the farm and the far farm is sold, the names die in that process. So it's important that these are recorded by giving coordinates where exactly the place name relates to and there's a means by which you can do that. Uh, I'm not sure of the detail how you register for it. I'll give you an example of a, play, a field name that might whet your, your appetite to do this study yourself, perhaps. In school, as part of a, an Irish language club, a competition for uh, interpreting names. And I also got boys in school to take me in examples of field names. When I was introducing this, in a class, a third year class, I explained what I was about and 
a boy put up his hands. Please, sir, I know I, I can give you one. And he said, I said, okay, give, give me. He says, um, Banjax. And of course, the class erupted into laughter <laughs> and scorned him, and he was suitably crestfallen. <laughs> but I came to his rescue and I said, Tell me again, say it how your granda would say it. And he thought it over again. He said, Maybe it's something like banjik, banjik. So I made a stab at it and I said, Ban means precipitous and jig goes to jig in dialect form. Banjik, precipitous ditch. In total awe, he said, How did you know that, sir? You've never been up on our farm. So it's an example of, of how important these are. They, they should be recorded and they're very interesting. At the moment, I have someone doing work for me at the house here, and he gave me five field names from his people's farm. We're important markers for themselves. That's what a place name is about. It's to designate a particular spot that you want to revisit, that you're not gonna to go to the wrong place, as it were. I mean, that's what, what naming is about specific and those were specific to the various farms. I mentioned the word loganium.ie and that's the term used for place names. It literally means place or hollow name. This term which is used to refer to our vast corpus of place names derives from the compound of lug meaning hollow and anium meaning name. It's like the same sweeping reference as in the English term, every nook and cranny. So the element lug, meaning hollow, crops up frequently. For example, you have legs in County Fermanagh. The English plural S added to a purely Irish name. So it should be the plural in Irish would be Lugana, perhaps, but instead here it's got an S onto it when it's anglicised to legs. Another example of lug is Lugat, Ligatracht, literally the hollow of the snow, where the snow lay longer than anywhere else in the area because of its height and perhaps not getting the sun. Ligatracht. Another example of the plural S added to names is um, quite topical in that they're promoting the seaside walk called the Gobbins. And Gub means a beak or a promontory. Gobbin means a little beak. And they've added the plural S. It should be Nagobine in Irish, but Gobbins, the Gobbins, with the English S plural. The prose and met metrical Dinshanicus that is preserved for us in the 12th century Book of Leinster is an ancient collection of place lore. So our forebears too were preoccupied with the interpretation of the names of places. So the the, the overarching term for that lore about places was Din Shanachas. So what does the place names corpus comprise? Well, by way of an answer we might say that there are two main groupings or aspects of our surroundings, namely the natural environment and the built environment. For organisational reasons, our ancient forebears simply named what they saw in front of them in their travels. Perhaps 
the high hill, the grey summit, the glen of the two lochs, as in Glendalough. A long name, Straw Letter Dull, contains references to both the natural and the built environment, in that it means the river home beneath the wet hill slope of the standing stone. Straw Letter Dull was a beautiful name in itself. Our ancestors also interacted with their physical environment, cultivating it, building on it, and modifying it in a range of ways. It is important to remember that they also conserved what their predecessors had constructed and ensured that we can still marvel at these ancient structures today. We owe them a tremendous debt of gratitude in that. The same forms or morphology, to use a big word, will show up time after time after time across the entire range of place name categories. So within this morphology, what do we have then? Well, a very large number of place names describe the terrain. Most examples have two basic elements, for example, Slave Moor, Big Mountain, containing a noun and an adjective. These are what might be called transparent place names in that they can be readily and easily interpreted without any research. There are others which are most difficult and quite obscure and difficult to interpret and require major research. You could have an example, for instance, of Alta Kiran, the glen of the bog or the moor, in that it contains a noun followed by another noun, but it's in the possessive or genitive case. So Alta Kiran tells you a bit more than Sleeve Moor. There are many one element names, such as Sowell in Antrim meaning a barn, tomb in Galway, meaning a tumulus, a burial mound. Because of the fact that Irish does not have an expressed indefinite article, in other words, a table, you have the table on tabla, but a table is tabla. So don't look for a in front of place names. It'll be simply like what I've said, Sowell, a barn, tuum, a tumulus. However, some place names, for instance, Onomi and Onway require the definite article. In local speech we talk about, that's the definite article. When you know that that's the thing that you need. That's the. Right? <laughs> the moi retains the definite article you refer to as the moi. Whereas you could simply have said moi, a plane. This is the plane of significance. You have that so anomi on way, on v, kind of me, na dunav, plural of na, on, is na, na dunav, downings. For those not too familiar with the Irish language, it's important to note that it follows the pattern of the Romance languages of Europe, that is, those influenced by Latin. Uh, they follow the pattern of placing the adjective after the noun, and Irish follows that. Irish also has the flexibility of placing the adjective in front of the noun and forming a compound when needed. 
but it's always a compound noun. So while Mullach Glass would refer to your average green summit, Mullach Glass, a summit which is green, Mullach Glass. However, Glass Mullach, with a slight hint of emphasis on the glass, Glass Mullach means a strikingly green or grey summit. A local place named Anoma here, Derig money, exceedingly red thicket of bushes. The name for Ireland itself is a single element, era, but it goes to Naharan in its possessive or genitive form, as in Tir Naharan, the land of Ireland. Era derives from Eru, E or A U Fada who is seen as a primitive mother goddess of the land. Modern proto-Celtic research tentatively suggests the name for Ireland. It says that it may mean she who continually moves or travels. That's a study of the elements that construct the word Eru itself. This has been interpreted as a reference to the daily east to west passage of the sun. So is Era ultimately a sun deity? We may never know for sure. So breaking Ireland down from that large constituent into four provinces we have Ulster, Munster, Leinster and Connacht. Back in history was a fifth territorial division called V, meaning the centre or middle, what we know now as County Neath. This area eventually ceded to the province of Leinster, so that left you with four provinces. But the original five element parceling out of the island give rise to the use of Cuiga, literally meaning one-fifth, one-fifth, which is the word habitually placed in front of the Irish names of the provinces, despite there only being four of them. The English version of three of the province names end in Stair, Ulster, Munster, Leinster. Let's take Ulster and explain the constituent parts in turn. The group known as the Ulli derived from Ul, possibly meaning beard, bearded ones. <coughs> and that has the Norse or, or Viking suffix star, S-T-A-D-R, star, S-T-E-R in English, meaning dwelling place added on so that you get Ulli Stair, the dwelling place of the Ulster men, of the Ulli. We can apply the same process to explain Munster and Leinster. Mua was a tribal goddess giving rise to the name Munster, and the people called the Lion were said to carry Lion, which were broad bladed weapons of some kind, spear or sword. The remaining provincial name, Connaught, doesn't follow the pattern of adding stair. The name derives from Connachta, meaning the people or followers of an original tribal strong person or leader called Con Cahoc. Con of the hundred battles, Con Kid Cahoc. We have that Acht ending, A C H T, in modern County Derry, where you have Kinacht, K E E N A G H T, and that would have been a tribal grouping as well, Kinachta. It would have been an A on there, as in Connachta. 
It is important to note that this inseparability of the personal name and place name is a decided feature of the toponymy of Ireland, in other words, the name, the giving of names to places. This process is replicated many times over. A person's name gives rise to an actual place and the two ideas seem to be inseparable in the Irish mind. Examples of those tribal groupings are important because they are widespread and perhaps some examples will be useful. We have Eva, modern Eve in Belfast, Ivali, modern county Offaly. I'll go back on this, but I'm going to tentatively give you Slough Neil, Slough Neil and Derry, Slough Kelly, Slut Kelly's in County Down. Sounds mildly insulting. <laughs> Shieldburn gives you Shelburne in Dublin, the seed of burn. Shillelagh gives you the word Shillelagh in County Wicklow, the seed of Clan Vrazel, Clan Brazel in County Marmah, Clan Yermada, Clan Dermot in Derry, Mutcher Devlin, Mutcher Evelyn in County Derry, Mutcher Linney in County Tyrone, corrupted to Mother Lunny in, in our, our dialect, Kinyal Ogarty gives you Kinyalarty in County Down, Kinyalay, Hughes Kind, Kinyal means kind, Kinyalay in County Cork, Dal Riada, as it's mispronounced now, should be Dal Riada. Gives Dal Riada and County Random. Dali Hasey in County Dublin derives from Dal Ihase, the land apportioned to Okasey. <laughs>